Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video and today I'm going to be doing a bit of a goals check-in and telling you how my goals are going halfway through the year. So in general I like to make these kind of goals check-in videos um, every three months so I did one at the end of March and now I'm doing one at the end of June letting you know how my reading goals have been going in April, May and June um, which is mediumly and not wonderfully um, but that's fine, that's fine. So I have a few like general bigger reading goals that go throughout the year um, and then I also have like a monthly checklist um, which I will go through later and show you how I've been getting on with that. So to begin with my like numbers goal my reading challenge for the year on Goodreads. For 2021 I set my Goodreads goal at 100 books but I also had a personal goal of reading 150 books. The reason for these two different numbers is because I work in publishing so I read a lot of books for work which I like count on my own personal list but they're not out yet so I don't count on Goodreads. So 100 on Goodreads 150 total um, and I said I didn't want to read more than 200 books because I felt like sometimes in 2020 I was focusing on like the quantity of books rather than the quality of books. So at this point at the end of June halfway through the year Goodreads thinks I have read 75 books um, and I've actually read 108 books um, so I'm definitely you know easily going to get my Goodreads goal and my personal goal but I'm probably also on track to read more than 200 books which I don't want to do um, which I know seems like like a weird arbitrary like thing to set myself a, a, a top number um, but I sort of want to make sure that I am not just prioritizing shorter books because I want to have read more saying that there are just so many books I want to read I think to be honest um, life is getting a bit busier at the moment um, and I started a new job a couple of months ago um, so I think probably my reading is slowing down a little bit and I probably won't actually end up reaching 200 books so maybe I will do fine and read like 180, 190 and be very happy so we will see. I'm reading lots of books anyway um, but I'm not necessarily ticking off all the rest of my goals. Because moving on to my physical TBR, um, I said at the beginning of 2021 that I wanted to keep my physical TBR to between 20 and 30 books and at the beginning of 2021 my TBR was at 37 books so that seemed quite doable and I also have this TBR jar here this thing which is obviously not a jar it is a small um, red spotted bucket um, contains the list of all the books that have been on my shelves since before Christmas 2020 um, so like the oldest books on my shelves basically and at the beginning of the year um, I had 23 books in and I said I wanted to read nearly all of those books by the end of the year this little bucket now has has 15 titles in so I haven't read half of it half of through the year and my overall physical TBR is now at 49 books which is is more than I I thought it was I thought there were like 30 still and then I counted them and there are 49 which I think is partly because it was my birthday in May and I got some more books and also because I bought quite a lot of books for the 1900 to 1950 readathon that were published between 1900 and 1950 and then I just didn't get nearly so much read as I was sort of hoping I would um, especially of the books that I physically owned so I've got quite a lot of books that I kind of bought for that readathon and then didn't read for that readathon. I probably also have been like allowing myself to buy more books than I usually would which is also sort of something I did want to do and I think I said in my reading goals I wanted to do more like targeted book buying and buy books that I really want to read um, and accept more review copies so I'm reading more like front list new releases and stuff like that so that's all kind of part of the reason why but my TBR has got a little bit out of control 49 books is too much and I have um, like two shelves that my TBR books are on which I keep my physical TBR on and I would quite like to keep it to just those two shelves ideally I'd quite like to get it down to one shelf and right now it's like two shelves with a big little pile of books on top of it so I think I think I need to slightly control my TBR at the moment. <laughs> Obviously in July it is Jane Austen July and I'm going to be reading books specifically for Jane Austen July. I do have a couple of books on my physical TBR that will count for Jane Austen July but mostly my focus in July is going to be just Jane Austen related reading but I think in August and September I'm going to try and focus on getting my physical TBR down a little bit. I'm going to try and not buy any books that would add to my TBR. 
I'm not going to put myself on a proper book buying ban because if I want to buy a physical copy of a book that I've already read that's absolutely fine but I'm going to try to not increase my physical TBR too much because it's already quite big and in August and September I'm going to try and with the exception of audiobooks basically just read from my physical TBR and try and get that down as much as possible because it is like I said just a bit too much at the moment. Another goal I had for 2021 was to work through my long-term Victorian literature TBR, which I had, which I think has 19 or 20 books on, and I've read two of them so far this year, so I'm not doing very well on that goal at all. Partly because there have just been lots of other reading projects that I've had in the first half of the year, and um, you know, the 1900-1950 readathon, um, and I was also reading along with the Walter Scott Prize, which I read a lot of historical fiction for, and I've also been doing the Bronte project which is hosted by Marissa from Blankly Bookish and I've been rereading quite a lot of Bronte novels but I was reading them in place of reading new Victorian books in a way so I think hopefully in the second half of the year I'll get through more of my um, Victorian reads that I want to get to. I think my plan this Victober is maybe to not reread anything and to just read entirely new books um, new to me books that I haven't read before so I'm not doing very well on that goal but there we go. I am however doing much better on my reading goal um, to read more new releases in 2021 and um, so so far out of the 75 books um, that I've read that aren't for work um, 23 of them were published in the last two years which is quite good for me and, and quite nice I think that's quite a good like ratio of like a third of the stuff I'm reading to be new releases or relatively new releases I think this is partly up um, from where it would usually be because I've been reading stuff for the Walter Scott Prize all of which are obviously new releases because they're longest in for a prize um, but it has been nice to read some and newer books that have just come out um, and I have also read a couple of like very new releases like the moment they've come out like Clara and the Sun by Kazuo Ishiguro and The Kingdoms by Natasha Pulley and Transcendent Kingdom by Yajasi these are all new releases that I was really excited to read and I'm glad I have managed to read them quite soon after they've come out because that kind of was really nice um, to get involved with that and to, to read them so I'm feeling positive about the new releases I've been reading even if it does mean that I have been neglecting my physical TBR a little bit too. And now let's move on to the monthly reading prompts. As you can see there is a lot less ticked off um, than I often have ticked off for April, May and June. Well not for April, April is very good and ticks on everything. May is obviously a weird month because I was doing the 1900 to 1950 readathon um, so there's lots of ticks on two prompts um, and the rest of the prompts are a little bit more empty um, and then June I just didn't manage to read as much as I usually read. I'm not sure whether or not I would say I had a reading slump but I feel like I had the closest I've ever had to a reading slump where like in the first half of June I read um, two books physically, one of which was 100 pages and one of which was 200 pages. And usually in two weeks I would read like four or five books I would say, um, especially if they were that short I would read more, um, but I was just struggling to concentrate um, and kind of getting through those slowly. So June was just a bit of a slower reading month for me which is fine. And towards the end of the month I read some wonderful things, it really got me back into the mood for reading and I'm hopeful that Jane Austen July as well with all the Jane Austen related reads um, will be really enjoyable too, but June was just a slightly quieter month so you know less girls ticked off and that's fine. Anyway, let me tell you about what I have read for um, my monthly prompts every month. Um, when it comes to Victorian classics, in April I reread Agnes Grey by Anne Bronte, which I really enjoyed, and I also read The Story of a Modern Woman by Ella Hepsworth Dixon. In May I didn't read any Victorian literature because I was focusing on books published between 1900 and 1950, and then in June I reread The Tenant of Warfare Hall by Anne Bronte, um, again for the Bronte project, like my reread of Agnes Grey, and I just really really loved it. I'd forgotten quite how much I love that novel. When it comes to um, British non-Victorian classics I read quite a lot um, in the last couple of months. Um, in April I read The Good Soldier by Ford Maddox Ford and More About Paddington by Michael Bond. In May I read a poetry collection called Poets from the Front, um, Despised and Rejected by Rose Alatini, The Enchanted April by Elizabeth von Arnhem, Whose Body by Dorothy L. Sayers, Brave New Worlds by Aldous Huxley, Put Out More Flags by Evelyn Waugh, Animal Farm by George Orwell, Crooked House by Agatha Christie, and A Bear Called Paddington by Michael Bond. Lots and lots and lots of early 20th century British classics there, but there we go. Um, and then in June I read one book for this category um, and that was 
Company in the Evening by Ursula Orange, which I really, really enjoyed as well, and I would highly recommend. When it comes to non-British classics, I've also read a few things um, each month. In April, I read um, The Waiting Years by Fumiko Enchi, which is a Japanese novel. In May, I read The Playboy of the Western World by J.M. Singe, which is a Irish play. I also read Arsène Le Pen, a Gentleman Thief by Maurice Leblanc, which is a French um, collection of short stories. I also read The Sand End of Polycarpo Charisma by Levi Barreto, which is a Brazilian classic. I also read The Beautiful and Dad by F. Scott Fitzgerald which is a US classic, um, and Quicksand by Nella Larson, also a US classic. I also read another book called Quicksand by Junichiro Tanazaki, which is a Japanese classic, and I read A Tree Grows in Brooklyn by Betty Smith, which is another classic from the USA. So quite a lot of non-British classics in May, um, all for the 1900 to 1950 readathon. And then in June, I read one book for this category, which was Cherie by Colette, which I, to be honest, didn't get very much out of. Um, one of the books that I read in what may have been a reading slide so I have been reading quite a lot of non-British classics, um, however my efforts to read more Japanese, French and Brazilian classics this year are going mediumly. I have read more Japanese and French classics, I've read one Brazilian classic. I have one other on my shelf which I'd like to read later this year um, and I would like to try and pick up a couple more as well. Um, so hopefully I will end up reading some more Brazilian classics later this year, um, but so far I have not been doing that so well as the other two countries um, for the classics I wanted to focus on that weren't British this year. Moving on from my classics prompts to my modern fiction prompts, I try every month to read some historical fiction. In April I read The Dictionary of Lost Words by Pip Williams which was amazing. I also read um, Mr Beethoven by Paul Griffiths, Hamlet by Maggie O'Farrell and A Room Made of Leaves by Kate Grenville. In May I didn't read any contemporary fiction because I was focusing on the 1900-1950 readathon and then in June I also read quite a lot of contemporary historical fiction. I read The Kingdoms by Natasha Pulley, um, Afterlives by Abdul Razak Gurnak, The Tolstoy Estate by Stephen Conte, and In the Skin of a Lion by Michael Ondarte. Um, my favourite of those was definitely um, The Kingdoms by Natasha Pulley, and I love Natasha Pulley so much. Although The Tolstoy Estate was very excellent too. I've been not been doing so well on my um, next two prompts. I have read one commercial women's fiction novel in the last few months, and that was A Random Act of Kindness, which I read in April and I have read one um, crime thriller in the last few months and that was The Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell which I also read in April and loved. It was very very excellent actually. Can't wait to read more by Lisa Jewell in the future. These problems have just gone a little bit by the wayside um, the last few months because I've just had lots of other reading priorities. The 1900 to 1950 readathon was happening in May and then June was just not so great a reading month and I was also trying to finish off my books for the Walter Scott Prize as well. I also have a modern fiction other category um, which mostly tends to cover like literary fiction, contemporary reading group fiction, and um, occasionally a middle grade book or two. Um, in April I read Disgrace by J.M. Coetzee, um, Clara and the Sun by Kazuo Ishiguro, and Stay With Me by Ayobami Adebayo. I really enjoyed Clara and the Sun and Stay With Me and I really, really rather hated Disgrace, but there we go. Didn't read any modern fiction in May again, um, and then in June um, the book I read which fits into this category is Transcendent Kingdom by Yarjassi. This is the second novel by the author of Homegoing, which is one of my favourite books of last year, and I really, really loved it. It was a wonderful read. I also try every month to read a contemporary or modern book that isn't from Britain. Um, obviously, again, didn't read anything for this in May because um, of the 1900-1950 readathon, where I wasn't reading any modern literature, but in April I read Disgrace, which is by a South African writer, Stay With Me, which is by a Nigerian writer, um, and A Room Made of Leaves and The Dictionary of Lost Words are both by Australian writers. And then from the books I read in June, Afterlives is by a Tanzanian British writer, The Tolstoy State was by an Australian writer, Transcendent Kingdom is by a Ghanaian American writer, and then In the Skin of a Lion is by a Sri Lankan Canadian writer. When I'm giving two countries, that's like the country the author was born in and the country they live in now. I also try every month to read something that is not a novel, um, so in April I read a non-fiction book which is Thinking About It Only Makes It Worse by David Mitchell who's a comedian. I listened to this on audiobook and really enjoyed it. And then in May I read um, a play, The Playboy of the Western World, which I've already mentioned. Um, again, I've already mentioned Arsène Le Pen, which is a collection of short stories and poems from the front, um, which is a um, collection of poetry, obviously. And then in June, everything I read was a novel, but that's fine. In terms of my TBR jar picks, um, I have been doing less well on this. Um, I read two books from my TBR jar um, in 
April, I read The Good Soldier by Ford Maddox Ford and Disgrace by J.M. Coetzee. Um, but in May and June, I did not, I did not pick anything out of my TBR. I either read books on ebook or audiobook or books that I'd owned for less than six months, um, which is not necessarily how I want to be doing all my reading. I would like to try and get through some of the books that have been on my shelves a little bit longer. Um, but there we go. Maybe I'll do better at that in the next few months. Like I said, August and September, I'd really like to try and focus on my physical TBR. And then finally, I do try and reread something every month, which I have actually been doing really well this year. Um, I was thinking that this would be my, like, my least priority um, prompt for the year, but actually I've reread something every month this year. Um, in April, I reread Agnes Grey by Anne Bronte. In May, I reread A Bear Called Paddington by Michael Bond. And in June, I reread The Tent of Welfare Hall by Anne Bronte. To be fair, a lot of my rereads so far this year have been Bronte rereads, and I am absolutely loving rereading books by the Brontes this year. So there we go, those are how my goals are going um, in 2021. As you can see, not so well as in the first quarter of the year. Um, definitely lots of things I was hoping to focus on this year that I haven't managed to. The last few months have been a little bit hectic. Um, I started a new job. Um, obviously, there was a readathon going on in May, which took up a lot of my reading priorities, and I was reading stuff for the Walter Scott Prize as well. So that's why I haven't been quite so focused on my goals. Um, I'm hopeful that um, in the next few months, I can tick off a few more prompts on my checklist um, and also get my physical TBR down a little bit more. I would really like it to not be still at nearly 50 books by the end of the year. Please let me know down in the comments how your goals are going at this point to halfway through the year. And that's it for now. Thank you very much for watching and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video.